Hey, welcome everybody to our 1929 four-door Model A. <laughs> this is Mr. Paul Shen, my guest star today, <laughs> and I'm Model T, as most of you know, and we are going to go over social media questions, and this young man's going to give us the answers. I'll try. Eh, I think so. He's pretty good at that. So we are going to get in this hot and heavy. We're not going to waste it. It's freezing time. cold in here. <laughs> I'm trying to fake them out. <laughs> it's so cold. Oh, no, I just fogged my glasses up. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty it's cold so today. Cold. We now have uh, snow on the mountains nearby where we can see it very and well. And it's going to snow here. Yeah, it's supposed to go down to 500 feet. We're at 800. 1,000. We're at 1,000? Yeah. Uh, we'll probably get snow then. Yeah, we're going to get <laughs> All right, you guys, here he goes. One of the questions. It is by our little friend. I'm not going to try to pronounce it because I don't want to get it wrong, but he's saying, what happens when your Babbitt bearings fail while driving? He's curious. Oh, I'll send you a picture to put up on the screen. It's yeah. ugly. Is it ugly? <clears throat> yeah. So the typical uh, failure is the center main. And what usually happens, uh, the Babbitt first begins to crack, splinter uh, pieces start coming out. But at some point, uh, the Babbitt will crack, a piece of it will kind of get turned, and it's in between the crank and the block. And it'll put friction on it, and with the motor turning, it'll generate heat, which will melt the Babbitt. <laughs> and then it just, it's, it just goes downhill fast, and usually what happens is you pull the oil pan off and you look in the dipper trays and there'll be all these little blobs of Babbitt all Ooh. in the dipper. Oh, it gives you that that's sick feeling sick. in your gut. Yeah. Makes you want to vomit. It's oh, just, no. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> yeah, that'll ruin your day. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, man. So usually what happens um, when the Babbitt goes out, you'll know because all of a sudden the engine will start vibrating and making a lot of noise that it didn't make before. Yeah, that makes sense. We've got Wade Dog. He's got a couple of questions here. He says that you posted a great tip on clogged fluid fuel lines. Um, it got him to thinking what tools and spare parts and supplies should a driver have on hand and ready for road trips short and long? We get asked that question a lot. And yeah, yeah. and um, so the regular Model A toolkit has almost everything you need. So uh, basically you want screwdrivers, pliers. I carry a socket set, um, just a regular, you know, ordinary craftsman uh, SAE socket set, um, and the new Rex timing tool. If you have all that, you'll cover, oh, and a roll of electrical tape. Huh. It comes in really handy for lots of things, not just electrical. Um, you can also hang Christmas lights on your Model A with it, but, um, yeah, that and mm -hmm. a pocket knife and you have almost every, you have 99% of what you need to keep a Model A on the road. And as far as short trips, long trips, no difference. The only difference being you carry spare parts on a long trip that you wouldn't carry on a short trip. Like a distributor? Well, the spare distributor and a spare carburetor, I just keep, every car has its own distributor that's already timed to that car and it lives under the seat or in the back mm -hmm. or whatever. Every car has its own. But because our Model A's go on long trips and short trips, and I just don't like to have a long trip box and a short trip box and have to remember uh, the only exception being this Model A that we don't really drive that much. But even this one has a timed distributor under the front seat. Sweet. And we don't, why don't we drive this one once a year, twice a year? Something like that, yeah. Uh, which is coming up, by the way, on January 1st, we're going to be taking this car for a ride. The weather forecast is clouds in the early morning clearing and uh, midday. So I'm going to try to put together a video and post it in the same day. That'd be awesome. I hope Just it all stays clear. I hope. See what happens. Because this car does not go out in the rain. His other question is, he's been looking at pickup trucks. Oh, good. Okay. And he says he's noticed in the middle of the floors that there's a metal square. He says, what in is the back. that? In the yeah, back. In the back. In the yeah. back of the bed. That says, goes over uh, the hump in the uh, rear cross member uh, where the rear spring is. Okay. That, that's just a plate over it because the uh, wood and everything that's in the truck is kind of thick. Uh, that plate is just a thin metal plate. And mm -hmm. because you need the this much more clearance back there in the pickup, oh, that's so what it's So it is for. removable? Yeah, you can take it out. Okay. <clears throat> Does it remove to work on it or is it just there to clear room? I don't really know what you'd do if you took it out for working on it. <laughs> um, it's pretty much just to save you that little, you know, this much more space. And he's just curious, as far as Roadster pickups, when putting down the top, does it just fold up and flop around or do you remove it? Oh, it just folds down and stays there. Yeah, okay. And that was
wasn't too bad. So Ken, he says, uh, he's wondering if you can tell him what to torque the lug nuts at. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. There's lots of people who say, well, the red book says 64 foot pounds or, you know, what all these different, you know, 42 foot pounds and all that. You know what? I torque them. Then I go, Ugh! and that's how tight they are. <laughs> so make sure when you do, you go, you go Ugh! Ugh! no, that's the wrong noise. You oh, won't, sorry. You won't get to the right torque if you make it. Okay. That's the right well, I'll practice it more. There are numbers out there. They're all different. The correct number is... Whichever amount of torque makes them not come off. Okay, put some put some Just muscle go, into it. Uh, yeah. Patrick says he's thirty seven years old. Good for you. He's bragging about his young age. I'm jealous. Oh, big whoop! I was way younger than you. Oh, so. uh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Having some problems. Uh, oh, with his dump truck. Oh, he has yeah, a dump truck. Yeah, okay. he, he has his it's dump a double truck. A or a regular um, a? I am gonna guess it's double A. I know we've been keeping in contact, um, so we've met. You know, mentioned them before, possibly. Okay. Um, but if any truck. of you, I kind of kept this on here because if any of you know any places where there's some um, dump trucks, where there's parts and this and that, he's really trying hard to find uh, parts for the dump bed. What he's looking for latches. is a half a needle in a haystack. I know, but you know, you never know. It's I know. Not, well, I know. It's but, a half a needle in a haystack. But hopefully, somebody will see this, hear this, and say, "Hey, I actually saw something like that." Yeah, you know, you're going to need to make yeah. your own parts. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, bummer. Yeah. Well. You know, we used to have a double A uh, flatbed oh, that we ended up uh, selling. But um, even that, double uh, A parts are not really. All. I mean, some of the parts you can get front bumpers and stuff like that all day long. But mm -hmm. some of the interesting parts, especially like for a dump truck. Yeah, bummer. They're made of unobtainium. <laughs> is it kind of like the fire truck situation same thing yeah. oh, bummer <clears throat> very specialized yeah. uh, but man when you can find <clears throat> it and get it going oh it's oh, yeah. so sweet all right jonathan says he has a 29 two-door seems like it constantly having to add water or antifreeze coolant to the radiator can't find a leak anywhere and no water in the oil any ideas uh chances are it's probably leaky head gasket uh, compression gas is pushing the coolant out, which I've seen lots and lots of times. Hmm. Uh, that doesn't mean that water is going to come back into the cylinders and you wouldn't see it on the dipstick. It means that the head gasket has, usually it's between uh, two and three. There's those water passages right there. <clears throat> uh, when there's compression gases, especially when you're Anyway, here's a way to check for it. <laughs> I, I, all I'm going to do is make this answer even longer if I go into that. So the way to check for it, take the um, radiator cap off, drive the car, and drive it hard. So, like, floor it. You know, put it in second, floor it, hold it there, grab third, floor it, hold it there, and watch what happens to the coolant. Now, even with the radiator pretty much full, you should not see coolant come out at all. Um, if you have a leak, what will happen is when you're really on it and there's a lot of compression gases, a lot of pressure to push the pistons down, uh, it'll find that little leak in the head gasket and it'll push coolant out. Oh, okay. And you'll find that if you take the radiator cap off. Now, like these other cars around us, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> you can drive with the radiator cap off. You won't lose a drop. Okay. Uh, and that's normal. Um, even like this one, we could drive this thing. No, no radiator cap. It won't lose a drop. Um, but the last one we had, I don't remember which car it was that had the head gasket problem. Um, well, like right now, Bob's, um, uh, 29 business coupe, um, that thing is pushing coolant out again. So we retorqued the head and then it was solved. And so, okay. <clears throat> do have, anyway, do you have a video on it yet? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just figure I check. Yeah. No, no, See if we that's... can refer to a video or something. So, hey, but at least it's, there's that. Maybe you can try that and hopefully that'll like figure stuff out. We'll try retorquing the head first, but okay. yeah, if, if not, then it's time for a head gasket. Or you might need to have it surface. Now, remember, see here, long answer. Open a can of worms. <laughs> Open a can of worms. So <laughs> we had that motor. We had that rebuilt motor that we got from the guy down uh, south. And a fresh, brand new, fresh, zero miles rebuilt motor with full inserts, everything else. We installed that in the business coupe, installed a new head that would have been surfaced, put it on, everything. 
and immediately that thing had trouble. I mean, from the very first start we did on it, we could see stuff seeping out from between the block and the head gasket, or the head. Uh, we tried retorquing it and everything, couldn't get it, pulled the head off, put another head gasket on it, torqued everything up, and it looked okay. Took it for a drive. The first drive, it was blowing coolant out. Wow. Oh, yeah. We couldn't get that thing to seal. Three head gaskets later, we said, all right, something's wrong. So, and we would change the head even, even change okay, the head. That, that, the story's okay, sounding very this? familiar. Okay, yeah. so oh. recently we took that motor, we took the motor out of the car, mm -hmm. put a different motor in the car. But anyway, um, <clears throat> we took that motor to Willie uh, Beckler over at Beckler Machine. Mm -hmm. What's wrong? What's wrong? Because everything looked fine to us looking at it. <laughs> so Willie uh, used his laser stuff on it or whatever, put it on his machine. He ended up having to redeck the block. The block was eight thousandths low, right in the middle of the block. Oh wow! And that was a block fresh from a well-known engine rebuilder. Uh -oh. The top mm -hmm. of the block was not. It looked flat with a straight edge on it, which is why you can't use a straight edge because when he put it on the machine, found out it was eight thousandths low in the middle. Mm -hmm. So he redecked the block, mm -hmm. we put head on it. Fantastic! It's, 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 everything's fine. Yeah, well, hopefully it's not something crazy like uh, that. Sorry that took so long. Sorry, children. <laughs> okay, Craig. He says. Paul can't get the flat head screw off the distributor. Distributor, got any secrets to remove it? What flat head screw? Um, there are no flat head screws anywhere on a distributor. They're all no, round head. They're all round head. Yep. I'll have to look back and see if there was anything before that. Then. Are you talking about the, the cam screw or something? Hmm. I thought that was a, an easy <clears> one. So <throat> it might be my bad. Maybe I missed something above it that should have been included with it. So I will check back on that one and see then. Well, if it's the cam screw you can't get loose, um, so good. Um, pull the distributor out. I mean, I mean they get stuck once in a while. I've had to just completely toss the distributor. Like the shaft's destroyed because I had to drill them out and stuff. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, soak it. Uh, just pour some stuff on top of it. <clears throat> Let it soak down. See if you can get it to break. Um, heat. Heat is good. Remember to take the points out if you can. If you have the modern points, they'll melt. So take those out. Put some heat on it. Break it loose. Hmm. So Mike showed his, uh, shared his cutie patootie car with us. He's got a, a rumble seat like we did. And it looks like he kind of put his Christmas lights on his yeah. like he did like you did on yours when it's we went looking at lights. Yes. Yeah. He says he's wondering what type of oil filter kit that uh, you use on the A and how often does it require oil change? He calls his car hobo, which is hilarious. I love it. Um, he's becoming a daily driver. So when I'm trying to cut down on the con oil consumption, um, thanks for any advice. Adding a filter won't cut down on oil consumption if you're consuming okay. it. <clears throat> it does, however, extend the uh, amount of time you can go between oil changes. So I've used both types. Now he's talking about the two types. There's the full flow and the partial flow. And the full flow, I think Snyder's and them uh, sell that one. And it's the one where the oil filter goes on the side of the uh, valve cover. Um, and the reason why they call it a full flow is because all the oil from the pump goes through the filter, then gets dumped into the valve galley. Hmm. The partial flow filter is the one that mounts up on the timing gear cover on the front of the motor. And uh, they call it a partial flow because some of the oil goes through the tube and through the filter and then dumps into the front of the valve galley, basically into where the timing gear is. Some of it just goes straight into the valve galley like it normally does without an oil filter. And, <clears throat> okay, so here's the pros and cons. So people say that you want the partial flow because if you use the full flow and the filter plugs up, then the motor doesn't get any oil and it self-destructs. And that would be true. I have never seen a Model A oil filter plug up that much. If it does, your motor is hosed and it needs to come apart anyway. Hmm. Nothing should be able to fill an oil filter up in a Model A motor and plug it. Hmm. Uh, seriously. Nothing. Mostly, okay. mostly because of the simplicity of it? Uh, no, or no. I mean, there's just not a lot of parts. They're not moving very fast. There's not that much wear. Yeah, yeah that's kind of what I mean by the simplicity Something of it. would have to yeah. seriously go. I mean, I've seen a car where the timing gear, a fiber timing gear, completely came apart. They replaced it without even cleaning out the oil pan or anything mm -hmm. and roasted another timing gear oh. because the real problem Gosh. was their distributor drive, but that's another story. Mm -hmm. They had basically two chop fiber gears worth of gunk in the car that the oil pump, it plugged up the screen on the oil pump itself mm -hmm. yeah. and didn't pump oil. 
the filter itself was fine. <laughs> the oh, oil filter was, well, it's after the pump, and there's a screen on the oil pump, and that plugged up. Hmm. Okay, so <laughs> the partial flow, they say, well, you don't want that one um, because it's only filtering part of the oil, and it doesn't really extend your oil change interval. That's false. I, I run both types, only be, not that I like one over the other or anything like that. It's just that they're expensive, and I buy them cheap from swap mates or mm. off of people used. Whatever one I get is the one I end up using on that car at the time. I have found no difference in the interval between oil changes between the two because I don't let my oil go that long anyway. About 3,000 miles is about as far as I'll go. And usually at 3,000, it's just starting to get some color to it. It's just starting to get dark. Hmm. And that's when it gets changed anyway. Nice. <sighs> Breathe. <laughs> Jeremy. Hi, Jeremy. He purchased a 90-degree oil filter adapter. Yes, I know what it is. Yes. And now people are telling him it's garbage. He sees that you, that you run one on your coupe. Do you run the same amount of miles on it as you would the, the ones that... Uh, replaces the valve cover. Did I read that right? Yeah, I just answered that. Yeah, you basically did, huh? And then, then he's saying the reason people say it's junk because the partial flow, I'm just trying to get away from the 500 mile oil change interval. That's 500. You said 3,000, didn't you? I go about 3,000, yeah. And yeah, so 500 miles. Well, because, miles no, what he's saying is so, like, yeah. if you don't have an oil filter, mm -hmm. then 500 miles is the recommended oil change interval. Like this car. Oh, gotcha. Okay. This car is all original, so it doesn't have an oil filter. I oh. would not probably even let this go 500 miles. Well, we never drive it. That's so, true. I mean, I put 500 miles on this in what, 10 years or <laughs> something? Oh, gosh. So, I don't know what it is. Mm. But anyway, uh, I just change the oil when it starts to look dirty. I don't really look at the mileage. Although, the cars with the oil filters, the ones that get driven a lot, when I change the oil, I write down the mileage on the oil filter itself. So I know. <laughs> nice. And uh, a couple of the cars have log books. Uh, this car has a log book. Um, but, uh, you know, seriously, people that are telling you they're junk, they're jealous. <laughs> they're really jealous you want to make them extra jealous you can polish it they're made out of aluminum put it on your <laughs> wheel and polish it make it look like chrome put it back on the car then they'll be extra jealous <laughs> that's funny okay there's another jeremy hi jeremy and he says what's the easiest way to clean out a gas tank without physically removing it is there a way with scrub it um you know what look at the video where i was working on termite bait where i changed the uh, gas gauge if you look I'm cleaning out the gas tank. I had that uh, metal, whatever it is, with the grabber on the end with a rag on it, and I was scrubbing the inside of the tank. Hmm. Uh, it's just a short clip in that video. I didn't really explain how to clean out a fuel tank, and I don't want to make a video on how to do it because that's probably not the recommended way anyway. Oh, no. But <laughs> it works for me. Yeah. Yes. All right. So you can at least scrub out the middle part because there's baffles in the tank. You won't get past the baffles. So you won't get into the corners, but you'll get the majority of it out. Is it something that I can share on my videos? Yeah, that'd be a great video for you to do on okay. your channel. Hint, hint, I'm making videos soon. <laughs> well, what, I'll bring a gas tank in from yeah. outside because all our cars have very clean gas tanks. Yeah, we'll have to do an outsider, definitely. Uh, yeah. Our cars, <laughs> gas tanks are so clean, you can comb your hair. Everything on your cars are so clean. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So Randy, he says, Hi Randy. <laughs> he um, he was talking to some people he's, and, and looking at different vehicles with the whole 6 volt and 12 volt issues. And he says some have been converted to 12 volt systems and, run, and with turn signals. He says, is that okay? Um, that seems to me not as desirable as a stock Model A. I agree with him. Uh, okay, you can convert to 12 volts, change all the light bulbs to 12 volts. You can change the uh, coils in the starter. You can change the coils in the motor that runs the horn. You can do the full conversion to 12 volts, and then that's fine. That's great. I got no issue with that. The problem is people convert to 12 volts and leave the starter and horn the way they are and say, oh, my gosh, the starter turns over so much faster and blah, blah, blah. Then you eat starter bendixes, you damage mm -hmm. uh, ring gears. You, I mean, it's just it's a plethora of problems mm -hmm. by not doing a full conversion. to try. If you're going to convert to 12 volt, great. Go all out. Do mm -hmm. everything. Convert the, the starter way. and the horn, everything. I got no issue. But they never do that. People never do it all the way. So especially like if you're going to buy a car, 
they could have just dropped a 12 volt battery in it to get it to turn over faster because they need to rebuild the starter or something and thought oh fixed hmm. yeah, it's not really it's, it's, not it's not putting all. a band-aid on a gaping wound oh man kind of, you know kind of scenario you've heard the lipstick on a pig you know thing kind of no it's that one <laughs> <laughs> i heard that one yeah you take a pig and you put lipstick on it to make it you know, more attractive or whatever, you know, to sell or whatever. Oh. <laughs> to spruce it up. But it doesn't, like, make the pig any better. And, and I don't know if you're allowed to say this in your channel, but sometimes people have referred to, like, polishing a turd. <laughs> 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 this is acceptable on my channel. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, sometimes just throwing a 12-volt battery in a Model A is doing that. Hmm. They're hiding something. Something wasn't right. They threw that in. I mean... But you got to convert the coil to 12 volts. You got to convert all the lights, the starter, the horn. And yeah. if you're going to do it right, then there's no issue. So if he's looking for a Model A to buy and you see one with a 12 volt conversion, be very, very weary. Weary. Make sure everything's really the way it's supposed to be for a 12 volt conversion. Yeah. Yeah. Buyer beware. Buyer beware. If it's got a 6 volt positive ground system, I would prefer that. Let's go to Lester. Yeah. Sorry. It's all right. It's all right. You, you did good. <laughs> he says uh, he searched videos, but no luck searching glass or windshields. I think he's speaking of your videos. I need to replace the windshield on my 30 town sedan and the sun visor. I'm sure needs to come off. Question. Do I have to drop the headliner or open the roof? Either way, doesn't look fun. To change the windshield? I guess so. No, no. you don't have to do any of that. Oh, that's okay. You can take the windshield frame out of the car without taking anything apart, really. Hmm. Um, so you have to take, you know, those two side things, uh, you know, you take those off, mm -hmm. take the gas cap off, take the windshield wiper stuff off, tilt the windshield all the way out, and then just slide it right out. It's like a... Like oh, it a, actually slides? Yeah, you can take it right out. Oh, wow. Uh, Brentwood Bob did a video. He's a friend of ours. Uh, Brentwood Bob, I don't know, can you link to his video? I can. I'll put can a little link, link there. Okay. Uh, he did a whole series of replacing the glass in a windshield frame and showed how to oh, do nice. it. It was, it was well done. That's cool. Okay. I will share yep. that with them. So shout sure. out to Brentwood Bob. Brentwood Bob. We love you, Bob. Link in the description below. Okay. That's what YouTubers say. Philip here is our last person. Hi, Philip. Last day. person. <laughs> uh, let's see. He says that he has a bad oil leak in his 28 two-door and decided to change the oil pan gasket. In his discovery, when he removed the packing front of the pan, I, th I thought part of the packing broke off and stayed in the par top part of the cracked shaft. Please keep in mind that I have never done this before, so forgive me for asking dumb questions. They're never dumb questions. Let's see. So back to my story. <laughs> stayed in the top part of the cracked shaft. Yeah, so maybe as we go along, it'll make more sense. Okay. Um, so uh, I began to pull out the packing I thought had broken off. Before I knew it, I pulled out another packing. See picture down below, which I will put up on the screen. Um, he says, now I have been struggling trying to replace the top packing on the crankshaft. I've tried to put some axle grease on it, trying to string and finish line to it and pulling it through, but no luck. Is there a special t tool that I need to use, or am I going to have to pull the engine? Someone in the Armonale Club mentioned a tool that resembles a Chinese handcuff. Oh, wait, the light went out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll turn it back on in a second. Turn it back on in a second. Okay, so here's the deal. So what he's talking about is the rope seal that goes on the front of the crank. So that is kind of like the front seal, if you will. So it is done in two pieces. The bottom part is part of the oil pan so when you take the oil pan off that comes with it the top part is in the timing gear cover mm. so you can replace it without pulling the motor i usually pull the motor just because that's easier for me anyway um because you will have to take the crank loose and you will have to take the center cap off the crank one of the nuts for the center cap is on the outside of the block very easy to get to the other one is inside the valve galley so you'll have to take the uh, valve cover off and then you can get to that nut and then you got to loosen the rear main cap in most cases if you don't want to especially if you have a, a babbin motor you don't want to screw that up but uh you can however just take the front timing gear cover off the uh top of the rope seal in the front uh the front seal if you will 
is in the timing gear cover. So take the timing gear cover off. You'll need the gasket and all that to put it back on. And it'll be kind of tough. You might have to pull the pulley off depending on uh, which pulley you have. If you have the two piece or the single uh, piece because that really, um, it's not the crank itself that's riding in the rope seal, it's the pulley that's riding in the rope seal. So get that down and you should have just enough room uh, to take the timing gear cover off. You can replace the rope seal and the timing gear cover, squish it down, do what you need to do, put that back on, and then pull the crank back up. Because if the crank is in place, you'll never get the timing gear cover back on. Ta-da! Ta-da! Turn the light on. <laughs> I'll go turn the light on and then uh, we'll continue. All right, cut. So you guys, all right, that's it for today. Thank you for joining us. I hope you watched the whole way through, got some good knowledge. But well, don't forget your big announcement. Yes, and I just want to let you guys know with the help of Paul here, always. No help from me. I am going to start kind of doing more of a very, very beginners, the bare basics and all that kind of stuff. Try to get some girls roped into the whole scene of things and get them working on these things too for the Model A's. I think it's a good thing. Yeah. You know, we've talked a lot about when we're traveling, you know, long distances. You know, he doesn't want to drive 100% of the time. It would be nice for him to be able to take a break, have me drive for a while. You know, and, I, and I'm seeing this kind of classically with a lot of couples. The men normally do all the driving, and it would be so nice if it was kind of shared, you know, different things, see some women in the engine. I think it's great. I've, I've saved myself some women on the side of the road, changing tires for them and stuff. Come on, gals. We need to be changing our own tires. You, Step you got up. this. I just put a little bit of some yeah. elbow grease into it, but you know, it's doable. Well, that's not nearly as bad as seeing those like 20 something year old guys on the side of the road with their cell phone on their head and a flat tire oh, no. calling a tow truck. It's well, like, it's... you're 20 something years old. You know how to change a tire? Well, you're a loser. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's one if they don't have a spare and that just sucks in itself as being unprepared. Um, and that sometimes comes with youth. I, you know, but anyways, so these are things that are coming along with the social media things yep. we'll still have once in a while where Paul will help answer stuff from Facebook. And Instagram. Model T will help you not be a loser. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, enough of our shenanigans. <laughs> I hope you guys have an awesome new year. This will be the last one before New Year's comes. Yep. And so stay safe, stay oh, healthy. Let them know I'm taking a break in January. Oh, yeah. Paul. He is taking a break in January, so be aware. I made 54 videos this year. Oh my gosh, that's Model a lot. Model A videos. That's not even the other videos. Woohoo! <laughs> Model mm -hmm. A, I made 54 Model A videos. Yeah, so he's going to take I'm a tired. break. <laughs> he's a tired guy. Take a break, yes. He's going to take some breather, come back all refreshed. But we're coming back with a vengeance. Yeah, he's coming back with some big projects. Cool stuff. So Thank you to the donors who have made these huge projects possible. Mm -hmm. And definitely. wait till you see what we've got for next year. And then Model T's channel, of mm -hmm. course, you're going to see some amazing things that will help the beginners and the ladies mm -hmm. and people who are maybe thinking about a Model A. And yeah, we've got sure. a lot of people who don't have one yet, but they're in search of. They're loving the videos um, to learn stuff before they get one, and that's that's excellent. So we're fogging up the windows. We are fogging oh, up the windows. <laughs> it's so cold. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get this guy back in the house, give him some hot cocoa, and uh, you guys take care. Love you. See you next time.